what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it. I've been to college football. And Jake, I'm going to ask you something, and uh, because I need some perspective here. Um, I don't know if I'm being a prisoner of the moment or uh, my homerism and sunshine is just pumping extra strong or I don't know, maybe I'm just too hyped on kind of the solidity of what I saw in that Arkansas film. Uh, my bias might be taking me over. I, I, I watched uh, this morning for about an hour. I watched a lot of Texas A&M Mizzou on film, and I watched a lot of uh, Texas A&M Mississippi State, right? I wanted to see one of their best performances and then one that was like, okay. Yeah. And I'm not coming away particularly impressed. Uh, I think that they're big, definitely. They have a lot of size. The defense, that D-line's really good, obviously. Nick Scorton's a great pass rusher. A lot of uh, havoc created by Scorton himself. Second in the SEC in tackles for loss. You know about Shamar Turner there in the interior. He's good. Um, this A&M offense, I don't know that there's a ton there. Yeah. You've had Connor Wigman play three Power Four games this year, and he was awful against Notre Dame. He was great against Mizzou, and he was okay against Mississippi State. Um, they have a good running attack. They 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 almost run. They, they line up a gun all the time, but they basically run a pro style offense yeah. just out of gun. Uh, and and so I they just don't feel particularly threatening. One thing that is also obvious is A&M has not faced an offense close to what they will see on Saturday. But I don't know. I, I think it's just watching too much Garrett Nussmeyer too, Jake, because like you watch Garrett Nussmeyer play, and then you watch Brady Cook and Connor Wigman go back and back and back, you know, against each other, and it just doesn't look the same. Yeah. Like ugly balls, not as quick of releases, bad decisions. It's it's. I don't know. Uh, I, I and, I, don't, and I guess I should say, like, I know it's going to be close. It's on the yeah, road. It's how sure. it goes, right? I know it's going to be a battle. I just am not, even with, like, a game that you dominated, like Mizzou, I didn't come away, like, overwhelmed or anything watch, watching this team. No, I think there's places, and, and I think they're a good team. I don't think they're they're great right now. Um, I think there's still some deficiencies they have. Uh, I think their corners are struggling really bad right now for Texas A&M, yep. and that gets covered up with the guys up front because I do think that they've got some really good edge rushers, and they cover it up because they get home pretty quick. The front seven as a whole is solid. Again, I think the edge rushers are the best part of that, but they got some some really bad corner play at times. Teams just haven't had time to get to the receiver. Yeah. That's one thing LSU does really well is give Garrett Nussmeyer time. So you feel like that's going to be an advantage for you. Uh, then we're going to the other side of the football. The right side of their offensive line wasn't impressive. The left side's a little bit better. Left tackle looks pretty composed. Going into the film, I thought across the board, just from narratives that I felt like I thought I knew, it would be across the board on the offensive line. Me too. Left tackle's good. Left guard is is pretty good. Center, right guard, right tackle have struggled at times for sure and not consistent. Yeah, and I mean right now I'll take uh, I mean Braden Twins in second in the SEC in sacks. I'll take I'll take that man uh, going against anybody. Him and the left tackle will be a battle, but yeah, I agree with you. The right tackle seems like an area that you could. Um, yeah, I that think, you could take. I, I think of. Moss is great at running back. I don't want to take anything away from him. I, I think yes. he is a really good player. I think he creates on his own as well. It doesn't have to be blocked up perfect for him. Um, and it feels like he is going to be what Texas A&M tries to use as their biggest weapon to try to beat you. Well, that's the thing, right? And and, and to be fair, when I say it doesn't feel particularly threatening, uh, it's a good point because partially that is probably a function of running a mainly pro-style offense where it's going to be a bit more about staying on schedule. You, you don't You don't care about the big chunk plays as much. A lot of workmen like runs and yeah, Levian Moss. I mean, I'll, I'll look up the stats real quick, see where he ranks in the SC. He he's obviously very good, but like that's. I mean, I I have it written right here. 
Um, if they can run the ball, the offense will work. If they can't, they're going to really struggle. And and and, and that's like you know that's the case with a lot of teams. But with this A and M team, it seems to be uh, even more so, even exacerbated. But like if you Connor uh, right now, Connor Wigman's pretty inconsistent. And if you force the game into his hands, that's going to challenge him. And why I maybe feel a bit bullish on LSU, Jake, we've seen back-to-back weeks them do that against teams that had better rushing statistics. Maybe not, maybe not the same style of how they want to get to those runs, but better rushing production overall. Yeah. And LSU shut it down, put in Jackson Dart's hands, had uh, success. He shut it down, put in Taylor Green's hands. And Taylor Green actually played really well. Avoided the rush, was consistently moving the ball there. Yeah, got the for ball a long out time. quick. Too. Got the ball out quick, but in the end, he too kind of fell. And so I, I, I see Connor Wegman, who I don't think's played as well as either of those guys. So there's a bit more nuance if you wanted to compare him to Taylor Green, but he's not going to be as mobile. Like a lot of those Swinton rushes and and some of those designs from last week get home. If 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 it's in the same situation, so I yeah I I I, I mean this is the ultimate stop the run and everything works. Um. And I just feel pretty good about LSU doing so, given that you just took down the top two rushing teams in the SEC each of the last two weeks, one of which was on the road. So I wonder if a so if A and M comes into the game plan and they're like, "Hey, we're going to run Moss, we're going to run Moss," and it's not working. Like I, I do wonder what their second pitch will be. Like That's what, what I'm saying, like, dude. Could we see? Marcel Reed come in like would he have a package because if I'm if I'm LSU like I'm I'm certainly going into the game plan with Moss being the one thing that I if I lose this game it ain't going to be because of number eight all right so if they do have success like what would Texas A&M do uh, Connor Webman can make all the throws I'm not saying he can't but right now I look at them at receiver and Barber's okay Thomas is okay Walker's kind of struggled this year, I mean, that is their identity is to lean on you, run the football, and break your spirit. Yeah. And LSU showed over the last couple of weeks that that hasn't worked against them. And again, look at the offenses that they've played this year uh, Notre Dame, I mean, you know, McNeese, Florida, Bowling Green, Arkansas, Mizzou, Mississippi State. None of those. Or good offenses. I mean, Bowling Green probably with Basilak, Basilak would be up there. You know, State at least spreads it out and wants to throw it around, but their offense has been hit or miss at times. Um, Notre Dame's offense is bad. It's... Yeah, the Arkansas stats are weird because Taylor Green threw for almost 300 yards and yeah, they only they scored 17 points. 3-0 three, three in the turnover department. In that game. That was, that was the ultimate, you know, Taylor Green. What do we kept saying about him? Like, that was Marcel Reed versus Taylor Green, and Marcel Reed didn't make the mistakes Taylor Green did. And, and that and that's kind of the other part right now, right? Like, again, A&M um, has won these games. But who's really quality on here? I mean, the LSU-South Carolina win continues to appreciate and value. Uh, the Ole Miss win it may not be, you know, like a top 10 win, but it's still better than anything on this list. I would take Ole Miss over Mizzou. Um, oh, yeah. You beat Arkansas, a common opponent. They had a neutral site. They barely beat him. You beat him on the road badly. And, and, and to be clear, the Arkansas game was closer than the final score says. It was an excellent job by LSU of s- snowballing. But, like, remember, we said the game was in balance when Whit Weeks made that incredible play. So that, 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 that was a fight. But they still made the incredible play. And then the incredible drives, they close it out and they win handily. They shut the door on that game. It's a team playing more confident. So I, I know College Station probably throws all this into the air a bit. It's going to really help that AM pass rush. Um, it can just be intimidating in general. If they get Levy and Moss going, then, then suddenly it's going to be game on. But I'm just being honest, and again, I'm also trying to acknowledge that maybe my bias is taking over. But after watching a, a, a pretty good amount, and you know, I've watched them casually throughout the season, but after watching like pretty good amount of film, 
today. Like you said, Jake, this is a good Texas A&M team. Um, and you can see the talent and the size, like yeah. the athletes, like they got bodies, but but it does. It's not a it's not a particularly uh, overwhelming team, in my opinion. Like I guess after my early film here, I come out more bullish about LSU than I went in. Uh, for me, if I if I, there's three players that I'm looking at for Texas A&M that you have to stop, and if you do, you're going to have a great opportunity to win the game. It's Moss on offense. It's Scorton and Stewart on the edge on defense. Yeah. Like, those are the three players that I think if you have a successful day against those three players, then you'll win the game. And that's not like besmirching the rest of the team. That's just that a, – look, A&M's offense runs through Moss. Their defense runs through their edge rushers. Yeah. And Shamar Turner's pretty good on the interior. Um, yeah. He, he flashes. Yeah. He definitely – there's there's sometimes that he's in there, but he – he wishes he wasn't. It's not as good. It's ever. It's not like the what motor's Ole Miss, not what I thought. It's it not was. like what Ole Miss was bringing to bear. Um, yeah, that's for sure. But yeah, I mean, look, there, there's still a ton more to break down with this game. I, I, I still need to, I, you know, I still want to dive into the stats. Like, like this is no stats. I didn't look up any stats to form any of this opinion. This is just watching them and trying to see how I feel about it. And and again, something to watch, like against Mizzou, Connor Wegman ends up with pretty nice stats. But then you watch the game, and there's maybe only like one or two throws. A lot of underneath stuff, quick hitting stuff. that Mizzou was kind of giving them. Also, what does Mizzou do well this year? Does it not look like they snap the ball, and then it's drawn up in the dirt? Okay, Mizzou? Yeah. Bro, it looks awful. It does. Brady Cook is... Like discombobulated he, he, and not fast. He's not reading anything. No, he and and he's getting freaked out immediately, and he can't outrun anybody. It's like, it's it's. I don't know what has gone so wrong with Mizzou's offense this year. I don't either. I mean, it no is Schrader. It is catching the football and l- head on a swivel, looking around for the open guy. Yeah, that's not supposed to happen at this level. You're supposed to have a progression that you go through, and. I just, I don't know, because Missouri returned, like, everybody but Schrader. Uh, Jeremy Fryer says, what did Notre Dame do to A&M? That wasn't the only, t- you know, to be the only team that beat him. So, to be fair, I haven't watched a Notre Dame film yet because I wanted to watch what I thought would be, like, the best film so I wouldn't come away with a biased opinion of, oh, first game of the season, lose to Notre Dame. I mean, what one thing they did is, yeah, they, they, they uh, I know, I think A&M got the running game going a little bit, but they forced him into 30 pass attempts. And Connor Wigman finishes 12 of 30 for 105, no tuds and two picks. Um, last week against Mississippi State, 15 to 25, 217, one tud, two picks. Right? The one good Wigman game was Mizzou, where he goes 18 and 22, 276, no touchdowns, no picks. So the only stat, I, and we're going to dive into the stats, I'm sure, coming up. The only stat that Stood out to me when I was kind of looking. I was surprised A and M is giving up some yards on the ground because I thought with those edge rushers who they've played, but they're giving up. I think it was right at 118, 120 yards per game on the ground, which How was Notre Dame bo- beat him. It's kind of in the bottom half of the SEC, and certainly over the last couple of years, that's kind of been a calling card for them was stout run defense, and so this could be a big Caden Durham game. Wow, Jake. What incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.